So with age, then your whitening toothpaste is going to give you yellow teeth. Dun, dun, dun. Welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry. Folks, to floss or not to floss, to mouthwash or not, veneers or straightening. You may also have a lot of questions when it comes to dentistry and dentist Dr. Brona Keane, also known as Ireland's Tooth Fairy, is here to answer all your questions. Brona, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm very nervous. I was having my cup of tea on the way on the train on the way up this morning. I was like, oh my God, I'm talking to a dentist later on. She's going to grill me for having my cup of tea. <laughs> no, I'm actually really nice, unless you're putting sugar in it. Definitely not. <laughs> so tea, tea's okay. Yeah, tea's okay. It's just going to be staining your teeth. Also, I'm not going to ask you to do a lie detector there on that. No. The sugar. <laughs> oh, no, there's no, no sugar, absolutely no sugar, but too much tea. Far too much tea. Um, it's just going to stain your teeth. So like from that degree, obviously, from like an aesthetic concern, but like unless you're putting sugar in it, I'm pretty happy for you to have it. You know, okay, so. so should we be drinking tea with the straw? Well, if you you can't anything that's not water, if you want to minimize the staining on your teeth, it's best to have it with a straw, and then especially like your fizzy drinks, because obviously then that's got your added sugar in it. But obviously then you don't want to be having any of those things too much either. Your yeah, straw yeah. is not your excuse. <laughs> Let's just set that right. straight. Okay. So, <laughs> so some tea is okay. So they don't drink coffee. Co what about co for those who do drink coffee? Is coffee worse than tea? Like same as um, same as the coffee um, okay. in terms, or same as the tea in yeah. terms of the stains. Um, and then just like watering it down or milking it down with any of your milks, but preferably actually dairy milk. So cow's milk would be oh, the yeah. best for picking up the stains and reducing the stains on your teeth. No way. Yeah, there you go. Well, <laughs> the Dairy Council will love you. Okay, that was good. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's, get, let's get started. <laughs> Basic do's and don'ts then when it comes to teeth. Uh, don't take a brushing session off. That's important. Consistency is important. Consistency is so important. And because, well, first of all, like people are always like just getting their brushing up right before coming into the dentist. So like, you know, if you're going to do that, at least do it two weeks before. Because if you start the day before, we're definitely going to know that you're cheating. No way. <laughs> yeah. Really? So it takes two weeks for your gums to heal after you've improved your gum brushing. Now I'm not promoting to just start brushing two weeks before yeah, the dentist. Yeah, okay. Definitely it's still based on consistency. So you want to just make sure that you're not having any inflammation in your gums. So when your gums are bleeding, it's actually a sign of a low-grade gum infection known okay. as gingivitis. Um, and a lot of the time when people see that bleeding, when they spit out or floss or brush or whatever, they actually then gear away from brushing sometimes because they're like worried they're damaging Seriously. their gums. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so they, what you want to actually do is you want to actually give your teeth more TLC and focus on the brushing more because if there's that bleeding, there's inflammation, which is swelling of the gums. And if you have any swelling in your body, like your gums, you actually initiate an inflammation reaction throughout your whole body. And that is why there's then the link between like dementia, gum health, okay heart disease, stroke. So while people always think that's wild, it is actually true. We can't do a flat study on it because we can't just start giving people dementia and heart mm -hmm. problems. But the link is definitely there. So definitely consistency. And like people are always like, oh, do I have to floss? And like the answer. Oh, we're going to get to floss. <laughs> I saw, yeah, I'm sorry, I, saw I was that. so eager on the oh, flossing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're going we're to send the bleeding gums because is it, So when people oh, see right. kind of a little bit of blood having brushed their teeth, what you're telling me is keep going. Keep going, yeah, and it will actually, you'll probably notice the bleeding there for like two, for the two weeks, and it okay. might even take a little bit longer because it's just taking for that to repair. Now, in saying that, if you notice the bleeding kind of extending past that two weeks, you do want to just get it checked by your dentist because okay. you may have like um, a more progressive form of gum disease, and then that means that your dentist might need to have you on different rotations. So mm -hmm. rather than six month cleans, you might have to be on like a rotation of three or four months. Oh, yeah, um, okay, so it should be every so six months that you're going to get your teeth. Cleaned. Get your teeth cleaned, yes, but you don't want to like just be like self-diagnosing. So if there's something wrong, like bleeding, mm -hmm. do you get it checked because then at least if it's nothing or it, like well, well, we're not calling gum disease nothing, but if it's something like minor, at least that's ruled out um, yep. because there can be other issues. Um, but but yeah, so so the bleeding is really important. And it's the number one thing that we look for in the dental checkup when you come in to make okay. sure that your gums are healthy. Yes. And uh, then the other thing about the gum disease is even if you get on top of your brushing, again, it's a progressive disease. So just getting on top of it once isn't going to be good enough. It's constantly progressing. So if you, you have to just keep on top of it because otherwise it will actually pick up where it left off the last time and just 
continue. Okay. Yeah, and then you'll get into the bone loss around the teeth, which is leading to tooth loss. And, and the bone loss is coming from lack of brushing? It's coming from, yeah, the bugs basically are getting in between the gum and the tooth, and it's wow. basically like eating the gum, the bone away. Um, wow. Well, like dissolving it, yeah. So, and we don't want loose teeth because they help us eat, <laughs> smile, and speak. So lots of function, so yeah. Okay. So use your floss and your interdental brushes and brush. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay, and how long do we, do we this is like going back to school. Yeah. <laughs> how long do you, should you, because people forget, right? They like, Life is busy, so this is really, we've never done, in, in six years of recording, we've never done teeth, and it's really interesting. How long do you brush, did you brush your teeth for? You should be brushing for about two minutes, but also if you're on an electric toothbrush, so none yeah. of the toothbrushes. Which is better now, an electric or normal? So literally whatever suits you. So I don't want to. answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, if you're like me, I don't want you using an electric toothbrush that you've forgotten to charge oh, because yeah. you forget to charge things, and then you start doing the electric toothbrush manually. Guilty That's the worst yeah. thing to be doing because you're not being effective at all. And the manual toothbrush is a different technique to the electric toothbrush. Okay. So, literally, so if literally if you do whatever suits you, I'm happy because you're going to be the most effective at brushing. Okay. But you just have to be using the right technique. So, with your manual toothbrush, you want to be doing in a circular motion, and with your electric toothbrush you want to be doing two seconds on each tooth on each surface just holding it because okay. the toothbrush is doing the work rather than you doing that circular motion with the electric one with the electric okay. but equally brushing in a circle is also good with the manual but you just want to make sure that you're not going in to scrub your teeth yes. because the scrubbing is going to cause that gum recession so please don't be saying that to your kids to okay. go in and scrub your teeth um, it's kind of like a well it's obviously it's so, so what you're saying is brush your teeth but yeah. don't scrub them really hard don't scrub them really hard because you're actually going to push that gum back so that's the gum recession and you're going to expose the root get sensitive teeth also leading to like gum issues wow. so uh, yeah go in and brush your teeth in a nice circular motion is what we should be saying <laughs> and that would be important for kids teenagers and adults with the likes of all t sensory processing issues where they for pressure where that they for pressure on on things gives them a sensory they have an issue with sensory processing so they may put too much pressure on the too much yeah and a lot of the time with um people that have difficulties with detecting pressure um it may be better than for you that would be an electric toothbrush maybe more suited for you, of course, then, you because yeah. it has the pressure sensor but just make sure if you're getting an electric toothbrush it's got a circle head to complement the circle contour of the gum and it's got a sensitive setting and a pressure sensor and as long as it's got that i'm happy you don't need to start getting like a super fancy Magic okay, so one. if you're getting electric toothbrush, <laughs> make sure it has a, a, a pressure sensor. Yeah, because then that will tell you if you're brushing too hard or when you're brushing too hard. I never even knew there were such things. So <laughs> we're learning. We're learning it's lots. It's that red thing that lights up. But if you're not charging <laughs> yours, it's not going to light up. No, no, I don't, I, I, no, I'll come back to the manual. <laughs> Water, flossing and water flossing. So, yeah, people love water flossers because people love gadgets. But okay, So for it, those who don't know what a water flosser is, that's certain. It's there. like a mini hose between your teeth. Oh, yeah. What I'm going to describe it as, or a little water gun even. Okay. Um, and it's going to just spray the water between your teeth. And because it's kind of like fun, nearly people want to use it as an alternative to Same. floss. Um, but nothing beats mechanical cleaning, like okay. full stop. And the water flosser is only going to like power hose water through, but it's not actually going to brush the teeth. So mm -hmm. your little interdental brushes are going to be like pipe cleaners and they're going to actually brush the tooth rather than just spraying water so down the So inter as in like a floss brush? Um, a little brush that's similar to floss, but it would be more regarded as the gold standard. So it's... um. Oh. They're literal, like they're little brushes, and they've got little frilly bits on the end. Go on. Yeah, I've <laughs> I'm making never, them so way funner than they ever. Are. They sound very. Good. I'm going to check them out and the cameras on the way home. And, and they're going to look all about. so boring. Um, okay, and, so, then, and would that be better than floss now? So we've gone for water flossing, which we're saying mm, maybe not. So water flosser, if you want to use it, use it in conjunction with the floss or the interdental brushes, which okay. then is just adding another step. So yes. I say, don't bother if you get there. Okay, so then would you go flossing or the the interdental brush? Yes, yeah, of I, e either of those is good, but then the floss, the only issue with it, it is cheaper, and so that's good. The others, the interdental brushes, I just want to say, are not single use, so people often get worried because they're a bit more expensive, but just they're not single use. But, and I'm getting into very little petty details on that, but anyway. This is really 
I love chats to people who are really passionate about what they do, whether it's like selling cars or dentistry. It's the same. Someone with a passion is fascinating. <laughs> but the floss is then you want to bring it down past the contact of the teeth, like the dance, you know, move to side oh, yeah. to side, not just go because you're going to just like slice the gums doing that and that's how oh, most yeah. people do it to like do it okay so, so okay so everyone's, everyone's now listening and thinking how do I floss okay so you're floss by putting them in between each and ridge the passing it back and forth, forth bring it down between the two teeth and then you bring it in a C shape around each tooth plunging it under the gum oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so you put a floss visual. in each hand <laughs> you put it behind the tooth and you floss it Yes, kind of. around in a C shape. C shape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, you see, it's just a little more technique sensitive. Okay. So that's why the interdental brushes are great, um, because they just go. It's just faster. I have never heard it. Like every day is a school day. We're going, let's guess where <laughs> we're going on the way home. Uh, okay, <laughs> home to work. I want an interdental brush. <laughs> mouthwash. Let's talk about mouthwash. Um, so mouthwash again is something that a lot of people like to use after brushing their teeth. Um, often because that's what mouthwash adverts tell you to do and the movies tell you to do, but mm -hmm. they are not supported by literature. Um, so if you're using mouthwash, use it at a different time of the day. We do a different time. Oh, this is all getting very complicated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I hope everyone's taking notes. <laughs> um, so if you're using water, no, you don't want to rinse after brushing your teeth at all. I read that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because it's like putting cream on your skin. So the toothpaste is like putting cream on your skin and then just jumping in the shower if you rinse it off. So you're not letting any of that toothpaste soak in and you're not letting the fluoride from the toothpaste strengthen the teeth and harden them. And you're leaving yourself more susceptible to cavities. And does that apply if you, say if you, if you, when, if you rinse after brushing your teeth with water, does that wash everything off as well? Yeah, so you don't want to rinse with water because there's like a negligible amount of, of fluoride in it. rinse at all. Just spit and walk away. Go on. Just walk away. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, you're and then... changing lives here. Is, okay. So okay. So when you're brushing your teeth, don't rinse. Don't rinse. Basically, is what you're saying. And then if you're using a mouthwash, use it later. Yeah, because the the mouthwash only has a third of the amount of fluoride in it. Of the of the a third of the amount of fluoride compared to toothpaste. So again, if you're you're just getting rid of all the goodness of the toothpaste. Okay. So use it at a different time of the day, or if you're kind of taking it for like, if you have a high susceptibility to cavities or you have gum disease, then get a specifically tailored one for that and use it before brushing your teeth, but just not after. Yeah, but I think after work is a good time or after lunch because you're, then you're just doing an added boost of all these goodness compared to just like trying to bombard yourself with too many steps when you're brushing. You know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's, uh, following off the mouthwash conversation, uh, bad breath. Bad breath. Talk so, to me about that. Because people use mouthwash for that reason or a lot of the time for that reason. Yeah, so, well, just on kind of that note, just with the... A little sidebar um, is that the mouthwash it with you don't want it to have any alcohol in it um, because alcohol mouthwash I, I don't even know why it's on the shelves but you look um, alcohol mouthwash is going to cause dry mouth mm -hmm. dry mouth is going to cause cavities and it's also going to cause bad breath if okay. you dry mouth that's okay. my link there <laughs> okay so, the bad breath though can be like from um, not cleaning your tongue, and now people sometimes go down the tongue scraper route. Oh yeah, on the back of the toothbrush is a scraper thing. Yeah. Yeah. I would prefer if you just use your a soft bristle toothbrush because oh, if yeah. you actually go too aggressive on your tongue, what you can damage is the taste buds on your tongue, and then have sensory issues and when you're older. So mm -hmm. you don't want to start scrubbing your tongue either. You kind of just want to be gentle and just remove any kind of like I guess discoloration on your tongue. Um, but the bad breath can also be from cavities, it can be from gum disease, or it can be from like reflux. So a lot of the time when people come in with bad breath and they don't have the other things, or even if they come in with ch chipped or shortened teeth, I'll actually always tell them to check in with their GP for reflux mm -hmm. because a lot of people have silent reflux mm -hmm. and you can see they won't have the heartburn or the coughing or anything like that, but they'll have evidence on their teeth of it. And then I'll, I'll tell them to go to their GP and I always hope they go. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. Yeah, because then your GP can just resolve that with like a, like a medication rather than like ruining your teeth and stuff. Because if your teeth are getting ruined from the reflux in your stomach, imagine what it's doing to the everything insides. between. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it is a really like important thing because also like the reflux is one of the leading problems to problems on your esophagus at the moment. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Take a bit of water for a second. Oh, sorry. You're flying. <laughs> I'm like it's road just, runner. <laughs> no, it's fine. no, but it's so interesting. Like it, again, this is just kind of stuff no one knows. So we, well, I, I, my perception of what everyone does is that they brush and then they use mouthwash or they wash with water. And now we're telling them actually don't do any of that. Just brush, <laughs> spit it out, leave it, uh, which is great. Now, okay, this is. I'm looking forward to this one now. Teeth whitening. <laughs> Teeth whitening. Popular. Very it's popular. Everywhere. Yeah. The super white. Good God, like they. Yeah. It's right. a super way to Tell market me, your products. <laughs> absolutely. Tell me about it. It's very, it couldn't yeah. be more trendy. There's yeah. two pastes. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, uh, tr- other treatments that you can get. Done. <laughs> Strips, all kinds of things. Lasers, yeah. yeah. Um, so the whitening in the EU has like been regulated. And basically for over the counter products like your, um, whitening strips and your toothpaste and whitening mouthwash, they are not licensed to have more than 0.1% of hydrogen peroxide. Okay. So that's compared to a prescription amount of 6% from your dentist when you get the professional at home whitening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with the, yeah. the stuff they put in the thing. Yeah. In the trays yeah. and you wear it overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a huge difference, 0.1 wow. to 6. So the the point one basically isn't doing anything. No. Um, so they add other um, acids and um, abrasive particles to whiten your teeth. So that's why I kind of regard them as like stain removers because they're only scrubbing off the top layer of your tooth and they are um, not penetrating the tooth to be effective. Okay. okay? Um, and when they scrub off the top layer of your teeth with these abrasive particles, they're causing, they're pinning that white layer on your tooth, which right. is the outer layer, which is the enamel and they're thinning that and then they're making the l- underneath layer which is yellow called dentine be more prominent so with age then your whitening toothpaste is going to give you yellow teeth dun, dun, dun. <laughs> do you realize that is a clip we're absolutely going to use for instagram <laughs> as you blow up the whole market of teeth whitening toothpaste Okay. Wow. Fine. Right. Okay. <laughs> I know. So, um, the again, another product, I don't understand why it's on the shelves because it is thinning your enamel. It's causing yellow teeth. It's causing sensitive teeth and people still use it because people wow. are looking for a cheap alternative. And mm. I understand that, but you would be better off a set, setting aside a smaller amount of money each month, the money that you're buying these whitening products with and getting the whitening in the future because... With your dentist. With your dentist. So your professional at home whitening. Um, because that's not going to damage your teeth. It doesn't change the composition of your teeth at all. Even though it has more hydrogen peroxide in it. Yes, because the reason that it's licensed by the EU and regulated is because they want a dentist to check you beforehand to make sure that there's no other underlying issues so that it's not going to cause other issues. So like, say, for example, if you had a tooth with a big cavity in it, it's going to lead to a root canal. So you want to get checked first to get the cavity filled and then do your whitening so that you don't come in those problems. So the professional at home whitening is not going to alter the composition of your teeth. It only just breaks down the stains in your teeth. So it just oxidizes those stains. And that type of whitening, the one that's done at night for about six weeks, is only going to cause short term sensitivity. Now, the the laser whitening that's done in the dental chair is a big no-no. Okay, okay. So we're saying no to laser whitening, no to the toothpaste that you buy, which says it's going to whiten your teeth because it's not. The only one we're saying to use is the the dentist uh, kind of... um, One of the trays that you wear at night. Yeah, I sound like a whitening Grinch, but it's just... No, no. It's the only... A qualified professional. (laughs) Okay. Um, The the laser, what's the laser? The laser, so it's done in the dental chair, right? And the laser is is to be attracted to the darkest thing in the tooth. Okay. Which is supposed to be the stain. Yes. Yes. But it's actually the nerve. So if okay. the nerve is attracting, because it's got the blood vessels and everything, it's dark, the pulp, and it's attracting all that energy from the laser. So okay. that's why when people be like, oh my God, I got laser years ago and I still have sensitive teeth, they 100% got the laser. Um, and so that's going to da- irritate the nerve long term with long term sensitivity. And it's a bit of a scam because it only lasts for a year versus the five years of the professional at home whitening. So that lasts okay. five years, the, prof- the at home one. And then the laser one lasts about a year. But most of the effect is gone after a week because when you are sitting there with your mouth open for an hour, your teeth get dehydrated, which gives this illusion of white teeth. And then when they rehydrate over the next week, they don't. Oh, okay. I know. 
Wow. So you walk out thinking, oh my God, my teeth are so white. And a week later, they're back to the way they were. And then you want to go back in and get more because you're like, oh my God, I loved them last week. Wow. Okay. You're a, <laughs> a regular customer then. Um, <laughs> oh, we're, th- we're hearing up loads of things. Okay. I'm going to pull it back to sugar now. Frequency or quantity? Which is worse? So frequent. I'm not saying to go hell for leather on sugar regardless yeah. um, but uh, in the real world people are going to have I know like a can of coke or or whatever it is sugar in tea or coffee or something or totally whatever. and I would be if anyone knew me they would call me a hypocrite if I said I didn't <laughs> have sugar <laughs> I have a little sweet tooth but anyway um, uh, it's definitely frequency like okay it's worse it's worse yeah so Again, like you want to kind of like limit your treats. So things that I always say is like try to not have sugars in your breakfast and try to drink water throughout the day. Don't be putting dilutes in your water and stuff like that. Because if you reduce the amount of times you have sugar, then it lets you have a treat at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, but you can't just keep splurging. I'm sure you have loads of analogies for that. What about sugar in smoothies then? So the... The problem with smoothies is just that it's broken down the sugars in the fruit and it's got them ready to attack your teeth, basically. <laughs> the Dairy Council will love you. The smoothies people will not. Okay. So they're not, we're, 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 they get their moderation. Yeah, they're a moderation. Or like, again, like try to, like I would honestly keep them for weekends kind of thing. Um, but also I would have them like with food. So like have them with your toast. So it's not just like the acids sitting there. They're kind of being okay, diluted. You receive with a pH foods. stabilizer or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, and then that would be the same with your orange juices and stuff. And you just really want to make sure that you're not brushing your teeth directly after smoothies and acidic things, because that's when your teeth are going to be particularly particularly vulnerable because of that drop in pH. So that acid base, um, your teeth will drop for an hour um, afterwards and you're up to an hour afterwards. So your teeth can be rotting for up to an hour after any food. Um, But like it's going to be particularly strong after your citruses and smoothies. Okay. Which is why I want you to limit the frequency of sugars. So again, if you're going to have two two, three biscuits, maybe four. <laughs> the pack over Christmas, whatever it may be. Yeah. Whatever yeah, yeah. you're into. Yeah. Um, have them literally in five minutes okay. rather than one now, one an hour, one in another hour. Because oh yeah, so the sugar dump at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. you don't yeah. want to keep spreading that out because otherwise your teeth are now rotting for four hours rather than five, one hour from the five minutes. And that's why the plain water is so important because you generally sip on water all day or your mm-hmm. dilutes all day and it's not something, you don't just go in and down your dilute, you know? So it's just trying to reduce that. And also tap water is free. So it's... Tap water or bottled water? Is there a difference? Um, Like tap water has fluoride in it. So I like tap water. You're voting for tap water. I'm voting for tap water. Yeah. Uh, And it's free and fluoride. So it's like plus plus. (laughs) The not... The the giving your teeth an hour after food. That's interesting now. Yeah. So... I've seen loads of people do it. (laughs) women in particular that they'll 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 like they'll brush their teeth after they've had breakfast or lunch or yeah so generally for brushing if it's not just smoothies and citrusy things i'd say wait the half an hour because it's like up to an hour if that makes sense yeah but, so the main kind of effect is gone after the half an hour um brushing your teeth before though you remove the protein layer on your teeth which is protective and you're supposed to wait like two hours for that to rebuild so the brushing before and after thing you kind of want to wait just half an hour either side of it regardless just as a by the way. But the main things that you really don't want to brush after that people do are vomiting, uh, drinking coffees, um, citrus Vom- okay, Vomiting because the acidity of the, vo- of the bile. Yeah, so all of those things are acidic. So that's even your coffees and stuff. So they're going to be the worst things for brushing straight after and they're going to be the things that need probably that full hour to repair okay. before brushing. I know, and then it's the things that you want to brush after. People will always have a coffee and then be like, oh, I just brushed my teeth before coming into you. And I'm like, great, double negative. Wow. <laughs> okay, so give it an hour or two. That's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. This has been some chat. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure. I was like, we're, we're going to talk with teeth. Okay. <laughs> Is, it's fascinating. It can be fun. <laughs> but it, this is really important stuff that people don't know. It's really important. Right. Okay. If people want to get to follow you, because presumably you do this on Instagram and stuff. I know you give out tips and kind of content and stuff. Where can they find you? Yes. They can find me on Instagram at Dior Bronakeen. So Dior, B-R-O-N-A-G-H-K-E-A-N-E. Um, that's my Instagram handle. Otherwise, I have a website, which is arlinstoothfairy.com. 
Amazing. Bruno, thank you so much for coming in. That thank was you for having me. 20 minutes of the crack of the teeth I wasn't sure we were going to have. That's brilliant. Folks, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode of Real Health. You have so much homework this week. Uh, an hour or two after food before uh, before brushing your teeth. Don't use water or mouthwash at the same time as brushing your teeth. And above all, have a great and a healthy week. And we'll see you next week. Slong ho. Hold up. 